Hello everyone and welcome to this Tuzar build guide or more or less a second overview update because some stuff is changed for the Thuzar. Even now after 11 years I don't know if it's spelled Thuzar, Tuzar, Tursar or how we call him in Bavaria. Aglorna Gnierbiesler which means literally with this insult you're targeting all those who have figuratively are unable to pee past their knees. So youngsters, Thusas, small Alvarines, small Ogmias, small everything and all other people. But before I'm doing more shit talk, let's go into the video. There are many ways to build a Thusar in general. The build is often mixed with Kalard because the Kalards have the highest strength of all the human builds. But you can also make a Thusar with just one Siduan in it. You will have about 1% damage bonus less, 2 points of health, but you will have about 5 decks more. What we are doing here just the basic build. Make sure that you pick their Kalard for the maximum size possible. The, uh, the optimal age is 30 because uh, then you have the most strength and with the size you go up to 212 not 216 because uh, that will save you two attribute points and uh, the actual height difference don't give you any more advantage besides one um, health point and 0.5% of damage. But if you're going full meta Maybe you should try the 220, but I'm not sure if Star Wars will remove that, that you can go over the cap. And uh, the weight, of course, depending on your playstyle, but for the Thusa, the most sense is uh, the Stout. So please get sure that you don't get overweight. Now we have the 119 strength and with our uh, two maximum strength Glade Gift, we can increase our maximum strength to 121, which is an awesome addition for the damage bonus. Also very good for bows. And on top of that, you can carry a little bit more. And if you don't like the yellow skin of uh, the Thusa, you can change that. If you want him to have a more human-like appearance, you can even decrease the spot size and even remove that from his face and if you're wearing an armor no one can see the spots anyway and uh, then you can also change his skin color to a more human-like skin color and you have basically now a very large human so he's also half human so that makes sense and also a very important thing to remember you must play with the builds yourself to get out the build you need for the stuff you want to do i mean it also depending on the glade gifts we come to the glade gifts uh, soon you can also play a smaller thusa with uh, 200 and for height for example and uh, then you can even have all the active glade gifts because if you go full height and you want to max out strength dexterity constitution then you will have a problem if you don't select uh, the glade gifts that give you plus three constitution for example or, or plus uh, two dex then you just don't have the attribute points left and if you skill the active glade gifts like for example war cry or something like that and you didn't invest it, uh, the points in the plus two dex for example then you have missing attribute points so in a build like a Thuzar, every attribute points matters. So here for example, um, the Clades Ice Guild now. This is more of a PvE Thuzar build. And he's also overweight, so this doesn't matter because, yeah, don't get overweight, guys. You really have to be careful, don't get overweight because um, this takes ages to reduce. A link for that video is in the description, by the way. I have an attribute overskill right now because of my Glade Gifts. Because I didn't took any active one. But for example, I could take now two active Glade Gifts instead of two passives. Like for example, the, the um, three constitution or something like that. I can throw that away or the two strength or something like that. And then I would still have maxed out strength, constitution and dexterity. So they overworked uh, this whole skill tree a little bit. And uh, this skill especially, you gain 3.3 health like it was before. But now the effect of your passive regeneration is doubled. Passive regeneration is a subskill of endurance and a video of how it works will follow but it's pretty neat. One potential problem here where many people argue uh, over each other for a PvE build this is an awesome skill but you will get 35 less health from being healed and in huge group fights and stuff this is just bad. I heard from many PvP guys that it's simply not worth it. If you're dueling with each other, this is perfect. But for group fights where you need heals all the time, this is a huge problem. Because normally you as a Thuzar, you are a frontline fighter and you, you, you must get heals all the time. So it really depends on your own playstyle and your own preferences. For duels and stuff, this is perfect. But if you don't take this, you can also take this for example. Your stamina drain for using meal weapons is, de is decreased by 10%. I mean the most people with a Thuzar play in heavy armor and if you're also playing with a shield for example then saving 10% of your stamina is actually worth it because you have also an active glade gift 
where you can just swing your weapon all the time even if you don't have any stamina. For PvP fights and stuff, this is required. I linked a build in the description, but uh, the Immortal Data Builder is with the Glade Gifts not uh, up to date. But uh, that is basically no problem because you have to sort uh, the Glade Gifts out yourself anyway. But what I always would take as a Thuzar are the 5 uh, maximum stamina, 5 maximum health, the 1 constitution point, the um, damage bonus points. The lifesteal here is even for PvE good. Also the 2 maximum strength increase and uh, the 2 maximum constitution increase. These are the stuff that I will take all the time and uh, the rest depends. Um, just a little reminder, really plan ahead that you have your strength, your dex and your constitution maxed out and also your size. If you want a huge damage bonus then you get to your 212 height, you can even go to 216 for example, but uh, then you have to skill here for example two more constitution points or two more uh, strength points and stuff. And if you have the clades you want it and you have your stats maxed out and you have not a single attribute point over, then you made it right. If you have some leftover skill points, then reconsider of changing it. Now very important for the future, if you see this um, five years from the upload date or even ten years later, um, this will be very important here. Um, you have the body heat and the world heat and we had uh, this in Saduka. You have a clade gift with the temperatures that you don't get affected so much and because you are a heavy fighter with heavy armor and stuff you really need that in temperate regions like for example Herabalta, Nordfeld, Saduka, snowy regions, desert regions and stuff. This will be necessary to skill if you live in that area or if you're regularly fighting in such conditions because uh, the effects are really hardcore. So now very important things about the stats. I use for example the same Glade Gifts, a link to the builds is in the description. We have 33 damage bonus, we have all our stats maxed out. We have a lot of stamina, we have a lot of health. And now let's compare this with a Thusa, Thusa, Kalad, Sidoyan build for example. So if you want to go more on PvP and you want to use your active Glade Gifts while still having strength, constitution and dexterity on maximum, then mixing a Sidorian in that build is a very good idea. You still have the same damage bonus, you will have 3 health points less, 5 less stamina, but here it comes, you will have 6 attribute points more. Uh, that means you can throw the Glade Gifts for example plus um, 3 constitution, plus 2 dex, plus 2 strength and stuff. You can throw that out of the window and use your active war cries, for example your battle cry, your war cry, your life steal and so on. But uh, the one drawback on this build is you can't go up to 220 height. Comparing this with 220 height, with 220 you would get 2 health points more and about a 0.5% damage increase. And for now it depends on how you wanna play. I suggest to you play around with the mortal data calculator or go in game and try it yourself because sometimes it seems a little bit inaccurate because the rounding is different than the rounding in game I think. But anyway let's talk a little bit about the skills. The Thuzar is mainly known as a foot fighter but you can also squeeze in mounted combat because you have the strength for it and you can do a lot of damage with that and dismount people pretty hard. Here is no mounted combat included, here is just riding included because I know from my experience from the first game at some point you just want to, want to go fast from A to B and uh, th that's why I also include in my, in my personal builds for me always riding because yeah, uh, without it it's just, it's just shit. I mean we don't have the wagons in game now and when the wagons come and you can you can uh, be transported by, by your friends and stuff, uh, then this is no problem, then uh, throw away riding. But until then I guess you will need it. Okay, aggressive stance for your damage bonus, yeah never drop that. Anatomy for your bandage usage is a absolutely must. Archery is optional, but always good if you have a bow at hand, if uh, you uh, encounter a mounted group or something like that. Armor training is a no brainer, yeah you are a foot fighter, you need armor training. Axes or any kind of weapon, axes is pretty good, it's something that has a lot of raw damage in numbers is perfect for you because of your high damage bonus in percent. That means you should choose a weapon that has a much higher raw damage output. Axes, hammers, halberds, something like that fits perfectly for that damage bonus. Because uh, the enemy can parry how he want, you will, you will smack them to death. Blocking, yeah, no brainer. 
Combat maneuvering is a no-brainer for every fighter. Controlled riding, optional of course. Creator control, also optional of course. Defensive stance is more or less optional. If you go more for a mounted build, you can even throw away sprinting. Depending on your playstyle, you can even throw away defensive stance. Not recommended. Endurance is always a must because it increases your stamina and your passive regeneration. I mean, the skill passive regeneration is an underskill of endurance, so yeah. And heavy armor training because you're a heavy foot fighter, you're standing on the front lines all the time and you need to have a very good equipment because you even need to survive if you get focused and eating hits left and right so yeah you will need heavy armors for more meta gaming pvp or more higher high-end pvp and uh, this is personally also the build that i will play because uh, this went very well in the first game so please leave your thoughts about uh, the build and uh, the thusa builds in general in the in the comments that would be awesome what you have experienced in mortal online 2 with uh, the your thusa builds and if you like them changed or not and if then how you can also write uh, this in the forums and here i just wanted to show you a little bit of the damage bonus because um, this is insane damage bonus i mean uh, this is a molarium Sword. If I would, for example, using an axe for this, one hit kill, of course. With uh, that damage bonus, you can reach with a steel sword, for example, you can reach up to 130 damage. With a tank steel weapon, even 160. And if you use an axe, for example, or a hammer and stuff made out of steel or tank steel, then it gets really insane. I think we tested that in the aggressive stance video. Link for that is in the description, by the way. So I hope you found uh, this guide helpful. And special thanks to Apenem for the sword, of course. This was fun slaying the undead. So to find your optimal Thusa build you should just go in game and just try it out yourself. And trust me some meta points like one health or a little bit of stamina and stuff. It really doesn't matter as much as you think. Because in a PvP fight where you maybe exchange 40 hits back and forth. The one health can save your ass. But will it really save your ass? Because in 99% of cases you didn't die because you had one health less or five stamina, five stamina less or something like that. You died because you had the wrong stamina management, um, the wrong movement for example. Or maybe missed some opportunities to hit your opponent and stuff. So all in all don't get too crazy and delete your characters just to have uh, for example a character with one health more or something like that. Um, that don't matter. Such things may matter if you have five to eight years uh, pvp experience and and only running around in ochmium and chronite gear and stuff then maybe something like that matters a little bit so all in all have a great day special thanks to all my patreon supporters carmel professor odonski and all the others of course also please leave a like and subscribe would be really awesome from you and always remember to make pick hard a uh, party hard see you all next time goodbye